Hi dancers, this is a very special online ballet class because before we get to dancing, I'm going to show you how to do a craft at home. One of our favorite things to do in ballet class is prop picker, where one dancer gets to choose something that the whole class dances with, such as a stuffed animal or a scarf or a magic wand. You might want to do prop picker at home, but maybe you don't have a magic wand. I'm going to show you how to make one. You need a few things. First, you need a clear workspace. So I cleared off this table and I put only my craft things on it. So have a grown up help you clean off some space, some kind of hard, flat surface that you can use as your workspace. Then I'm going to need some kind of stick. This is just a dowel stick from the craft store. They come in a little pack. You can also use lollipop sticks or cake pop sticks or popsicle sticks or a stick from your own backyard, or maybe even a pencil that you cover up with some tape to look very cool. Then I need something to put on the end of my magic wand. I'm gonna use these stars that I cut out of cardboard. Maybe you don't have any cool craft foam or things like that, but you might have a cereal box at home. Have a grown up help you cut two shapes that are the same size out of that cardboard cereal box and you can use that. Mine are stars, but you might make any shape you want, perhaps a diamond or a half moon or a flower or a heart or a, a circle or a diamond. Did I say diamond already? Whatever you want it to look like. If you want it to be more of a fairy wand or more of a wizard wand, you might change the shape. Now, since the cardboard is not very beautiful by itself, I'm gonna cover it in some cool paper like this. This is scrapbook paper, but if you don't have any colored paper of your own, maybe you have construction paper that's already one color. Or maybe you can take some plain paper and color over it with all your favorite colors. Then I'm gonna use a few more decorations. I have these little gems that I'm going to glue onto my stars. And I've got some curling ribbon. And maybe you have glitter or stickers or something like that that you could add to your wand. Last, I'm going to need some tools. I'm going to use a glue stick and a pair of scissors and a hot glue gun. Now, if you have a hot glue gun, you also need a grown-up to help you. Are you ready? I'm going to move the camera a little closer so you can see what's going on on my workspace, and we're going to do this together. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is cover each of my stars in some paper like this. Now, I am not super good at cutting things. My mommy will tell you that. So I'm gonna just cut a square like this, tip it upside down, and now I'm going to put glue on my star. And I'm gonna glue it right onto the paper like that. Now I'm going to cut some slits around my star and I'm just finding the point that is going inward and I'm cutting in a line toward that. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to fold the paper around the star and maybe I can cut off some of the extra because then I can just glue that down. That way I don't have to cut a perfect star shape out of my paper because I think that would be too hard for me. When I made these stars, um, I'm pretty sure I used a stencil or possibly my mom to help me. I'm not kidding, I'm really bad at cutting. Uh, when I was in, I'm left-handed as you can tell, when I was in first grade, um, my mom sent a note to my teacher saying that she noticed that my cutting work was really sloppy in all of my craft projects and could she send some scissors to school with me that are lefty scissors. And the teacher wrote back, we still have this note in my keepsakes, our scissors can be used by left or right-handed students which I think was a really polite way of saying, sorry, lady, your kid is bad at this. But you don't even have to 
be good at cutting. Look at that. I think that is not a bad job. So now I'm going to do it again for my other star. I'm going to cut out a little square. You can have a grown up help you with this. I'm going to put some glue on one side of my star. And I don't glue it on the colorful side, I glue it on the plain side. Now I have to cut some slits. And I'm just going to kind of cut around to make little flaps. I'm trying to hold this so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, then I put glue on my flaps. You don't need to have a glue stick. You can have regular Elmer's glue. When I do crafts with little kids, or even big kids, um, and I have to use glue for a lot of kids, I um, put the glue into little cups and have them use Q-Tex to paint the glue on, and that works pretty well. I'm just gonna fold, fold, fold. This is a great craft because you don't have to be in ballet to do this. You could do this with all your brothers and sisters, or your mom or dad. Now I've got two stars and I have to put them on my stick. This is where the hot glue gun comes in. So I'm gonna plug my hot glue gun in. This is where I need a grown up. See, for things like that, fortunately I am a grown up in the strictest sense of the word. So I am qualified technically use a hot glue gun. Now, look at all this mess I have. What should I do with this? That's right, I should put it in the garbage or in the recycling. This is paper and I do have a paper recycling, so that's where mine is gonna go. Okay, while I'm waiting for my hot glue gun to uh, heat up, I think I'm going to decorate my stars. I have a very random assortment of shapes here. So on one side, I'm gonna put my flowers. And this little oval. And on the other, I'm gonna put all my hearts. I think I'm gonna make a five pointed heart shape. One for each of the five points of my star. I'm not super sure how well my glue stick is going to stick with these little gems. Um, craft glue would be ideal. You could hot glue these as a grown up. Um, or Elmer's glue would probably work just as well. Okay, these are my little shapes. Test my hot glue gun. Yep, I think it's just about ready. So I have to flip one shape upside down. I have to make sure I know which way is down and up. I've decided this is pointing up. So I'm gonna make sure that the upside is facing away from me and the downside is facing toward me. That's the way I want my glue gun to go. That's the way I want my stick to go. So I'm gonna take my glue gun and I'm gonna do a couple lines of glue. They make them with these little stands, but if your cord is tangly like mine, it doesn't really work. And I'm gonna, yeah, I just have to slide it down. And then push it on there. Make sure a grown up does this part because that hot glue is ouchy, ouchy, burn your fingers. Okay, there's one end. Now I have to glue the other end on, but I also have to make sure that the points stick together. So I need another piece. Where's my other? Have another glue stick somewhere. Hang on. One eternity later. Okay, I need another glue stick. I'm going to put glue on each of the points of my star and then some more glue on the stick. 
And once again, I'm gonna make this the up of my star. And I'm gonna have a grown up help me push these two ends together. And now I have my basic wand, but I'm not done yet because ribbons. This part is super easy. All I have to do is tie them on. You might have your ribbons even longer than mine. I took four ribbons. And I'm gonna fold them in half. These uh, are really tangly because um, I have packs of crafts and uh, these were in my pack for magic wands. So um, they've just been in a plastic bag all smushed together, but I'm gonna make them look cool in a second. And I'm just gonna tie them right up at the top. And I'm gonna put one dot of glue right on the knot so they'll stay put. I'm gonna unplug my magic, uh, not my magic wand, I'm gonna unplug my hot glue gun because I don't want it to keep being hot. Now I've got this very messy ribbon stuff. Now I need a grown up again, a grown up who has a pair of scissors. If you have curling ribbon, your grown up can probably make your ribbon curl into little ribbons. There we go. It helps if your ribbons don't get glue on them. So the reason I have all these crafts is because I like to do little workshops called fairy tale ballet for students. Um, last year I did them once a month on Saturdays um, and then I, I did them again um, in the summer and summer is when I originally created them for. It's like a week-long workshop. You come, you learn a little dance, you have story time, craft time, snack time, and um, it's just all a whole little workshop dedicated to ballet. So I have a ton of craft supplies that I've just been collecting for every time I do that and every time I do crafts. And this is one of the crafts I often do, is making magic wand. So there you go. Here is my now complete, very fancy magic wand. And now I'm gonna dance with this. Um, usually in class, I will play something like uh, one of the fairies from uh, Cinderella. There's actually five fairies in Cinderella. It's like way more fancy than the Disney movie. Today, I think I'm going to play The Sorcerer's Apprentice, which is music you might recognize from Fantasia. But before I do that, I have to clean up my workspace. So put your magic wand down. That way, if there's any glue that needs to dry, it can dry. And we're gonna clean up our workspace. And when you see me again, we'll be ready to dance. So pause the video until your workspace is clean. Okay, dancers. Is your workspace clean? I cleaned up my area. So now we're going to dance with our magic wands. When we hold our magic wand, we have to make sure that we stay clear of any people or objects around us. We just made this thing. We don't want to break it on a wall or poke our brother in the eye and hurt him. We only use our magic for good in ballet class. So make sure you have a nice clear area Keep your eyes open and keep your distance from other people. Parents, this is a great way for your child to practice social distancing. All right, are you ready? Strike a magical pose. 